Carpe diem. My name is Ultranetic, and welcome back to Total Drama Vlogs, going over Total Drama Island 2024, over today's episode, Can You Believe It? <laughs> I, I swear, these titles keep going, like, back and forth, as far, like, as far as the, like, the bad pun titles, as far as, like, oh, I really don't like that title, too. So bad, it's really good. This is definitely in the so bad, it's good kind of category, like, <laughs> what? Like, the more you make these titles like dad jokes, they're, they're majorly hit and miss, in my opinion. But in this, care, in, in this case, I would say it's a pretty decent hit for an episode title. Uh, quite fittingly, for an episode that I'd say is a major hit in of itself, because uh, I, like this one, I like this one quite a bit, actually. Uh, like, not everything about it, necessarily, but overall, I look back at this one, and I'm like... Uh, I really do enjoy it. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna give you a little scoop about something. Some of you may have actually caught this, but if you didn't, I'll just tell you. I initially made a Total Drama Vlog of this episode last week with preparations to actually premiere it on that same day. In fact, I was filming it in that same green sweater that I had on for the other vlog I did last week, and then I checked the schedule and realized, oh, Canada's only showing that one episode and not this one. I was like, okay, I'll change that because, again, for anybody who are is watching this episode for the first time, I don't I don't want to give stuff away before they've seen it, so I figured it'd only be fair to wait on that one. Uh, but hey, it is premiering today, so uh, I can finally get this out there. So. Uh, yeah, let's talk about Can You Believe It? <laughs> I do kind of laugh at that. Uh, so it opens up again with Caleb working out. You see Z come up and talk to him about how he's been hanging out with Priya a lot, to which Caleb says, I'd argue kind of stupidly because why, why does everybody do this? Uh, that he's trying to build an alliance with Priya. What is it with every player advertising? You can't keep your alliances hush hush for real. <laughs> Like, that's not something I'm mad about. If anything, I love that kind of messy, old-school gameplay where it's like, nah, our alliances are, like, straight on the table. Y'all can see it. <laughs> I don't know. It, it, it does make for, like, a more interesting idea for a downfall, in, in my opinion. But, yeah, he's building... I mean, he, he tells Z that he's building an alliance with her, not necessarily a relationship, which distresses Z a little bit, given he knows about Priya's crush on him. Speaking of, Priya asks Z... If he told Caleb anything about about her crush on him, and then goes back and forth pretty humorously about asking for details and then no details and yada yada yada, I find the back and forth pretty uh, hilarious. And he's like, "Oh, I don't want to be a part of this." <laughs> I don't blame you 100 percent on that one, Z. I like Caleb. I like Priya. I like them together too. It's just one of those things where it's like this does strike me as a very complicated situation, but that's part of what I like about it. Because compared to other showmances on this show who get in the conflict for very contrived reasons, I could see conflict coming from very genuine, well-written reasons in this case. and But not in any way it feels lazy. It feels like it's all been properly set up over time. So, uh, that's a good sign. Uh, we then get to the dining hall where teams have been dissolved at the final 11, which is a pretty big moment again. I thought it was pretty big in the last season. When the tribes were take were uh, divided at ten, but now it's at eleven. So uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, Bowie is of course worried because he's worried about not having the numbers now to keep himself safe and to get Julia or MK out. Uh, it's also revealed that an immunity idol, which is basically a golden bobblehead of Chris, has been hidden in the woods somewhere that plays exactly like a survivor hidden immunity idol. So. Uh, well, I don't know about Survivor Hidden Immunity Isle, or more the, uh, Super Isle, if you will, but either way, it'll keep them safe. Uh, the challenge is going to involve canoeing, which means the players will have to pair up for this challenge, but Chris, but MK knows that this is an odd number, so they really can't all pair up. So Chris says, okay, everybody pair up except MK. And I'm like, yeah, when you really think about it, how much you want to bet they were planning on merging at 10 initially, but then after the end of the last episode, he changed that up to 11. Specifically for what comes in on this one. Because the teams do pair up as you'd expect. You got mostly the showmanches all pairing up. Uh, Rajbo, Rip Axel, Prelib, 
Uh, then you got Damien and Z, who I guess are kind of buddies, which just leaves Julian and Wayne, which she's not happy about, to which I say, why don't you just pair up with MK then? Like, screw Chris's rules, do whatever you want! What's he gonna do, penalize you? I mean, he should, because you were on the cheating too thing. I'm sorry, why is all this game blamed on just MK? It's not specifically just her who did it. She might have done a lot of it, but she wasn't the only one who did it. Julia's implicated, Bowie's kind of implicated, uh, Ripper's kind of implicated. Come on, do something about that. But we'll get on that to come. Um, Chris, of course, lets MK know that uh, he knows about MK's cheating. Yeah, took you long enough to notice, dude. <laughs> and that her going solo is her punishment. Also, he tells everybody about the cheating. Now, I'll be fair... I agree with that situation because that should probably be known. Like, why would you hide that to the other contestants in the first place? And they're all naturally pretty mad at MK for it, especially the uh, especially the, the rat faces. So MK has to carry her own canoe, and because of that, a bunch of animals climb on top of it. Probably missed something, but I have no idea why they climb on top of it. Is it supposed to look like a tree? I, 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 I'm probably missing something. So if it's if that's an ignorant question, ignore that. I just find that a little peculiar, but it does lead to a pretty great line later on when after a lot of animals get on top of it, she slams the canoe down and goes, this is why I support clear cutting. And I, I, I mean, that would be terrible. <coughs> excuse me. If uh, she didn't follow it up with, I don't, but when I'm mad, I say stuff I don't mean. That's funny. That's very, very funny. I like that quite a bit. Uh, otherwise, yeah, all the air contestants are, like, trudging through the canoes with their uh, canoes, like, being carried like this. So, uh, yeah, Raj and Bowie, of course, being uh, being delightful. We don't see anything of Ripper and Axel while they're carrying the canoes. That's, that is what it is. Uh, pardon me. Sorry, not professional. I'm just blowing those a second. It's just allergies. Uh, but yeah, you got that going on. You got uh, Caleb and Priya, again, being pretty uh, adorable together, to which Damien's like, man, that's some major flirting, to which Z's like, oh, or maybe he's just building an alliance with her by showing off his muscles and good charm. And Dean's like, yeah, that's called flirting. To which confuses Z further, which... The weird thing is, this wouldn't seem all that complicated to the naked eye. But Z is a kind of special case. In fact, earlier in the episode, Wayne and Raj were talking about how Wayne had some kind of condition that put him in a medical journal where there's, like, no room in his skull for anything else to go. And, uh, and I'm like, yeah, there's a lot of stupid guys on this show. But, I don't know, kind of delightfully stupid for the most part. I mentioned that before. I'm going to mention it again. At least they're all different varieties of stupid. And it... And the, stup and the stupidity can be from both uh, the heroic and villainous sides, if you will. I, I, I like that little bit of variety, too. Uh, so then we get uh, Chris and Chef in royal garb, which has Ripper asking, oh, did we time travel? To which Axel says, wow, you're not smart. That's hot. <laughs> I adore how shallow this is. Like, you see, this is a good, this is a good idea, because... Caleb and Priya are clearly like a more like plot focused relationship. They have a lot more complex intricacies that are going on. Ripper and Axel have none of that. Like, you know that line that Sam Manson said in Danny Phantom where she insulted uh, Paulina by saying that she's sh by, by saying that she's shallow, and Paulina's like, "You think I'm shallow?" As and Sam replies, "Do you mean if if I if by that you mean could I step on you and not get wet?" Yeah, <laughs> that's what these two are. But it's a delightful kind of shallow. It's a lot. It's it's basically like Tyler and Lindsay, except a little. Except they're except uh, Ripper and Axel are more cringe, but otherwise they are about as straightforward, uncomplicated a relationship as you could possibly get with this show. And I do kind of love that. At the very least, it's it's it, 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 it's something I can't help but watch. It, it's it's a good sign. So, um, then Z tells people that Damien is, quote, a level 8 wizard squire. Cool. d and I began playing that recently, and I enjoy it. Uh, and, uh, because of that, Z thinks that Damien will win, will win this challenge. 
please don't ever get Z in touch with Leonard from Pocket 2 Island. Please don't. It's It was already bad when Sugar thought that Leonard was legitimately magic. Don't do that with Z, please. I like Z a lot. I like him a lot more than just about everybody from Pocket 2 Island, but please don't let this happen. Please don't let this happen. Please, I, I couldn't bear it. So, uh, the contestants are now going to be jousting each other in canoes, and the pairings will be by whoever they were partnered with when carrying the canoe to the beach. That is an excellent twist. Like, holy cow, like, like, 10 out of 10 points for that awesome freaking twist. Like, that's a great way to build up drama. Everyone's, of course, distraught, except Julia, who's like, yes, I get to bow this guy I don't even like. It's just great. I love this show so much. Uh, but yeah, who's MK battling then? A bear with boxing gloves. I freaking love this show so much. <laughs> oh man, this is great. Yeah, I should obviously die. I gotta catch the camera for a reason, people. <laughs> so, uh... And in case you're curious, is Chris punishing her specifically for her cheating? Uh, okay, here's one pro Here's one of the few, like, problems I have with the episode. Like, I don't hate it for her, but it is one of those things that does kind of aggravate me. Apparently, Chris had no problem with cheating whatsoever. Are you kidding? Really? Then why doesn't everybody cheat? Like, every single person. Like, what's the point of actually competing? And for the record, the question's rhetorical if you know anything about... Like, drugs being used to gain advantage in, like, the Olympics or anything like that. Th that's, the, that's the reason. It ruins the authenticity and ethical nature of competing. You don't want that happening. It taints it. It makes it no fun for anybody at that point. And, and, and for anyone who's arguing, well, doesn't everybody just, like, do that stuff? That, that's really unhealthy? Hello? So... I know, I, we haven't gotten to that point at all with this show, but if that is the logic that Chris is going to be using, Chris, like, please tell me you care about it a little bit. The weird thing, though, is, despite that, I still call Chris and Chef in this iteration better, because there's a slight possibility that they were totally okay with the cheating back then, too. I know Don wasn't from uh, Redonkulous Race. He called that kind of stuff out with Jocks and Jose uh, every time. But uh, Chris and Chef, I could kind of see this being a pattern, which is not something I'm happy about, but it's something I guess I can accept because why would I just suddenly be mad about that now if it weren't a thing that's been consistent down the road? Again, I'm not positive. It just strikes me as something that would be very in character for both the new iteration of Chris and the old one. Uh, that all being said, that's not why he's punishing MK. I do like why he does punish her. It's for stealing my hair dryer. You gave me a bad hair day. Not gonna lie, I find that pain is very funny. <laughs> and also in character for Chris. Yeah, like, hey, like as long as you're consistent while improving him a little, I'll take it. I don't know, like, it's, like, it's an aggravating that he's okay with the cheating, but it rebounds well enough, in my opinion. So, we see Axel have to, have to take on Ripper, and Ripper tries saying, we can't, I'm not gonna let him tear us apart. Chris, Axel and I have to change partner. <laughs> you see what I mean about these people all being really stupid? What happens next? Axel takes him out, like, without hesitation. <laughs> That's just great. To which Ripper's like, I can't believe you did that to me. You know what happens to couples when they when they fight? They make up. <laughs> the shallowness is... <laughs> um, we see Prelo battle each other with a lot of very witty, likable banter. They're both kind of going easy on each other, Priya, because she doesn't want to damage Caleb's perfect face and body. He's basically more... He's basically, if you somehow fused Justin and DJ together... In the best ways possible, for the record. Like, I like DJ. I have issues with Justin. Caleb is like them both, but the absolute best quality you can get out of both of them. You can argue that means, well, isn't he kind of like uh, Alejandro then? Eh, he's not villainous villainous like Alejandro was, so I don't know. And yeah, Justin was a villain. A bad villain. 
as in like just not very good at what he does and he focused mostly on his looks the looks just come naturally for caleb so there is that um but yeah uh, and caleb is not is, is going uh is going more easier on um priya because you know he doesn't want to break up the alliance too early that's smart and that shows you that he's like like he actually thinks about the alliances he has because heather no qualms whatsoever about breaking up about about betraying her own alliances like that which was entertaining but for the sake of gameplay catastrophically stupid <laughs> caleb at least plays it smarter I, I i i can appreciate that uh we see uh base we see raj basically take himself out for Bowie, which I found quite heartwarming. Like, Raj didn't even take offense to it. I don't think Raj would have been a target either way, so like, good call. Prelib basically take each other out, which I thought was pretty cool, and uh, they go off to find the idol, which, again, Caleb, why would you advertise that to people? Like, maybe they could figure it out on their own, but at the same time, like, can't you keep a secret? Like, as much as there's a plot line about Z not keeping a secret about about Priya's crush on Caleb and Caleb's kind of sort of dynamic with her Caleb ain't that much better <laughs> it's like dude keep these kind of things hush hush if you want to like stay in the game but again I'm not mad it's just one of those things I find intrinsically fascinating that they'd even like like he'd be written that way <laughs> but I think it's entertaining um uh, and also, we should we see that Caleb finds he might actually be falling for Priya genuinely. And you know what? That is hard. I, I could all see that coming from like a mile away. As far as like, yeah, that's a very, very distinct possibility for this show. Uh, so I am happy that they finally decided to bring this route out now. Uh, Z tries taking out Damien, who have a pretty solid battle between each other. After Z's uh, jousting stick... And Soda, by the way, get taken out for him. He tries jumping on the canoe to try and take Damien out. And it almost works. But it doesn't. In the end, it causes Z to be jumped out of the canoe instead. I like the idea of like, well, here's my last ditch effort. I hope it works. Because usually, it does work. But here it didn't. I, I, I do like that little bit of variety. Uh... We see Prelib uh, bond in the forest over uh, having parents that are, quote, a little much. <laughs> okay, we all know the deal with Priya's parents. How little much are Caleb's? Uh, they told him he couldn't do any fun stuff until he did his homework because they want him to get into MIT. I could see that being overbearing. I mean, the huge, like, overbearing parents kind of thing. Bria's parents gave birth to her while they were on a cliff. And they've been training her for reality shows since freaking birth at this point. And they don't want her to be a doctor. And they put away her million dollar savings until she's 40. I'm sorry, Bria's parents are obviously a little worse than Caleb's. At least Caleb's parents, like, maybe they didn't let him have a lot of fun. But they weren't actively making his life, like... <sighs> I don't, I don't want to say Priya's parents are abusive, because that's probably not fair. I'm sure they loved her, but imagine any other parent doing this for their kid. I mean, yes, there are reality show contestants who have kids who they kind of sort of train to become players in the show in, in some in some cases, but I'm sure they let them be, like, regular kids. Like, that's all fine and good. Priya's parents... <laughs> Like, they, they bring it to a cartoony extent about how, like, how overboard they went with this kind of training. So, that's more what I'm getting at here. Like, when I say abusive, please say that with a grain of salt. I don't actually know what their parenting style was like. Just based on what we heard, I would call their parenting styles highly questionable. Highly. But, at the very least, they bond over something like that. Which, is again, it's pretty cool. Um... Uh, Julia tricks Wayne into the loss, and MK takes herself out of the competition because rather than die, she just will sacrifice immunity. Which, I'll be fair, is pretty funny. The bear gets dismissed by Chris, and the bear literally boos him. I love this show. I really, really love this show. Ah, so, now that means the final four are competing, and that it, and it's going to be Bowie versus Axel, and then Julia versus Damien. Uh, Bowie 
takes out Axel by tricking her into saying like, oh hey, is that is that a ripper giving mouth to mouth to a raccoon? What? And of course takes her out. I can't blame Axel for falling for that one. Not just because she actually does have feelings for Ripper, which is another reason why I kind of like this show. It's not just shallow. They actually do like each other. That's a good sign. But also because that sadly sounds in character for Ripper. In fact, Ripper doesn't even act like, oh, she really thought I'd do that? No. Like, yeah, that, that's not all he says. In fact, he's flattered that, he, that she fell for that because, like, I guess her one weakness is her love for me. Why am I not vomiting at this? I should be, obviously, but I love watching. I have no idea. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe I'm just, maybe I have some kind of problem. I have no idea. Not a problem, problem. It's like, you just enjoy whatever you want to. But I do question why I enjoy it. Because it, by all outward appearances, I shouldn't. But I do. And I, 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 I accept that. It's just, it's just good entertainment. That's all I got. Uh, we then see Damien get lucky in how he takes out Julia. I mean, he, I mean, he tries, but the fact that he beats Julia, you and I'm like, really? Uh, okay. Like, good for Damien. Like, I can't say I saw it coming, but cool. Uh, and then we get, uh, and after, by the way, after Axel gets taken out by uh, Bowie, she gets targeted by a shark in the water, because of course a shark gets put in there somewhere. And you know that thing about how Courtney literally battled sharks? And then the writers forgot that, and she became scared of him again. Again, I don't care for that. Uh, Axel doesn't battle the sharks. She just points at them and says, don't even think about it. And it gets intimidated away. That is just bad freaking ass right there. <laughs> I love it so much. So anyway, we get to the final stage of Bowie versus Damien. And, uh, yeah, they're going to do actual jousting on this beach with horses on water skis. This is what you can get from an anime reality show, folks. It's like a Jeff Foxery joke. They'll probably have to cancer water polo after the first two or three horses drown. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Bowie asks that Damien take a dive for him, and Damien sounds like he probably would have been okay with that. I mean, Damien wouldn't have been much, been much of a target either. But he did want to get one good shot until he can go out like an honorable knight. I do like that he does get a little in character with his D&D &D side for what it is. And, uh, so yeah, he goes for at least one good shot with Bowie. And that one good shot actually earns him immunity. Bowie gets taken out. Everyone's surprised. Me too. Even I'm like, Damien wins first immunity. I mean, good for him. Like, I'm not opposed to that by any means. I like Damien, but who saw this coming? Because I didn't. I'm sure a lot of our people didn't either, but like I said, good for him. I, I do like being surprised every once in a while. Ironically, before Bowie gets taken out, Bowie says, I want the editors to give me the slow-mo treatment that my uh, victory deserves. <laughs> yeah, that reads exactly the same as when Alejandro at the end of World Tour says, I demand to get what's coming to me. <laughs> because yeah, he gets a slow treatment. He gets the slow-mo treatment when he gets taken out like that. <laughs> So we get to the elimination where Bowie, MK, and Prelove are targeted. MK for the cheating theme, Bowie for being a big threat, and Prelove for having a good dynamic and for going off and searching for the idol, which Chef then says, which neither of you found. I don't think production's supposed to reveal that to other contestants, folks. Like, yeah, Prelove know where they found they're not. Y'all do, the rest shouldn't. That's not fair. But whatever. Uh, Bowie gets taken out because uh, apparently MK Yulia pinned the whole cheating scandal on him. Which, on one hand, given his track record, is believable. But on the other hand, why didn't Bowie say something? Or Raj, you're waiting for that matter. Like, they would have vouched for him. Like, I know he was implicated, but they. I'm pretty sure they are aware that it wasn't Bowie's idea. It was MK and Julia's. Which, again, why is it all being put on MK in the first place that she did it? I don't know. But they have a heartfelt goodbye and whatnot. Bowie goes out in style. We get a couple more bad puns from Chris. The bad puns in certain episodes would probably be something I dislike, but because a bear comes in right afterwards and boos Chris for them, it makes me like the episode a lot more. So, uh, yeah, that was Can You Believe It? By all appearances, there's a lot I shouldn't like about it. And yet, I kind of love it. Just 
all around. It's a very highly entertaining episode with a with great ideas for twists, great idea for karma, great chemistry between the contestants. Now I'm gonna stand by. I think it's mostly because both Chase and Emma, the two characters who I was having the most problems with, especially from the last season, are out. Like, because they're not in here, we mostly get a bunch of good characters, or at least characters with potential, shining in this season. And that is so refreshing, you have no idea. At least for me. So, uh, yep, yeah, highly recommend. Uh, that was Can You Believe It from Total Drama Island 2024. And I can't wait to see y'all in the next vlog. Take care.